Welcome to Podcast Pathways for Disability Services. I'm your host, John. Today's episode is episode two in season 15, and it's entitled How Much Less Is More? In this season, The Way of the Podcaster, I'm delving more deeply into a podcasting philosophy. So today's instalment, More Less Is More, looks under the assumptions many of us enter the discipline with. For the digital native, the idea of minimal tech is not anything outrageous. For the rest of the world, history matters. A one-person setup in the past meant an individual with a masked aerial in the backyard, sending their voice across the world in shortwave radio-style productions. Usually live, usually only to others with a similar setup in their backyards. After we moved out of the 1920s, the Marconi revolution in wireless communication, or radio, depended upon larger and larger studios with more and more tech and trained engineers. Toss in some sales teams, stenographers, producers, managers and owners, and we have the model for the last 70 years of the 20th century. To be fair, that model still exists for terrestrial radio today, but I'm not sure who was actually listening to that anymore. Podcasting began back in 2004. Way back then, the RSS feed, the file that tells Apple, Spotify, and nearly everyone else your latest episode is available, had to be handcrafted. That is, typed by hand. This required a minimum level of technical knowledge. The editing software available then was lifted directly from the music industry and contained many tools not required for a voice based media. The same can be said for mics. The thing with mics is their intended use. And if you're in that terrestrial radio world, hugely expensive, highly sensitive mics require soundproof studios, an audio engineer external to the studio twiddling dials and sliders and whatnot. The point being, as the 20th century rolled through and turned into the 21st, the way to improve audio was to layer more levels of technology onto the actual voice being recorded. Technology that was increasingly expensive as the setup became increasingly complicated. More tech, more people, and more corporate structure to finance, maintain, and drive the system. The DJ, the talkback host, and their ilk were but the tiniest tip of a huge iceberg of structures, peoples, technology, and culture. In the last 20 years, the possibilities for podcasters exponentially exploded. We can still hear the old radio types talk about the need for layers and layers of tech to manipulate their voices into some perceived standard from the pre-internet age. These, I find, are unnaturally clean in that they are devoid of nuance. The subtle background sounds we require as humans and feel false because they are, I suppose. Nowadays, everything from the inverted commas cheap $20 eBay mic to the many thousands of dollars worth of studio equipment are on the table. Alongside these changes in mics are a plethora of editing options. Many of these still carry huge amounts of bloat from a voice recording consideration designed for music production. With the Apple Baseline option, GarageBand can be downloaded without all the musical loops and doodads, but it still needs some tweaks to set up. Close the metronome down, change the timer from bars and beats to seconds, and you're ready to kick off. The elephant in the room when it comes to the last 20 years is, of course, the iPhone. Launched back in 2007, when I started back in 2016, I used the iPhone 4 as my mic for the first 50 episodes of what's now called Change Underground, and was called World Organic News back then. And the sound quality and mic ability has vastly improved since then. So if you have a phone with a voice recording option, you're ready to start, even if you don't think you are. I would recommend downloading the Rode Reporter app. In their, it is in their either iOS or Android form. It's free and despite its somewhat low star rating, it's an excellent voice recorder. Simple, easy to power up in a hurry and does what it says on the tin. It records voices. And some background, but nothing excessive and that we can deal with later. To add a level of sophistication to the phone, a Rode VideoMic Me adds a shotgun mic to your phone. Now this is a small, heavy, relatively heavy, hence tough piece of kit. Fits in the backpack with no dramas at all. 
It fits into either the charging port, lightning or USB-C, or into the headphone jack, depending on your phone and the model of video mic me you purchased. A shotgun mic is one that has a very narrow area of picking up sound, sort of the reverse of the shotgun blast. This episode was recorded entirely using this system. An iPhone 13 mini and a video mic me L, L for lightning port, I think the sound quality is good. For full disclosure, the phone was propped up on the desk with the mic pointing at my mouth from about 15 centimetres away. I would also add I have no financial relationship with Rode nor any other company. I use the tools I suggest because they work. For interviews or multiple person episodes, I found Zoom works really well. You need to go to settings and ensure each participant is recorded independently and on the cloud. All the participants need to be aware of this and that Zoom will do its magic for a short time after the meeting ends. Once you have a notification from Zoom, you can download all the tracks onto your laptop. The benefit of these individual tracks is you can drop the volume on someone talking over the top of others and edit the entire conversation at once while maintaining the continuity of the audio. You have the option of downloading video and audio, or just audio. For the most part, I only use audio. So once I have the audio, I run it through Orphonic. It's a thing you can get to on the web. There'll be a link in the show notes. You get two hours free per month. So four half-hour episodes, perhaps. This puts everyone's levels, that is volume, at the same place. Now, Orphonic suggests you do this after editing and before publishing. I do it before editing for the reason stated, even levels across all the tracks. Then I edit and publish. Editing is a matter of preference. I know of at least one podcast who started way back in the day who still edits their own audio on GarageBand. It is free. It is more than sufficient for the job, but only for on Mac devices. Audacity is another free editing tool for iOS and PC. I find it ungainly and ugly, but as I say, it's a matter of preference. My preference is Hindenburg. Designed for voice, it's a digital audio workstation, DAW. I find its editing tools intuitive and very simple to use. I had a look at GarageBand the other week after several years on Hindenburg, and the keystrokes and mouse movements came back fairly quickly. I could use that, but I prefer the look and feel of Hindenburg, so I'll stick with that. So less is more, remember this. Bringing all this together, a podcaster will need, as a minimum, one, a device to capture audio, so a phone, a mic, Zoom, or something similar. Two, a way to standardise the audio, or phonic. Or, and three, a DAW, a digital audio workstation, GarageBand, Audacity, or Hindenburg. With those three things, you're on your way to recording and publishing. Next episode, I'll take you on a journey through the world of podcast hosting to ensure you receive the services you need, the stats that matter, and the distribution to cast your pod across the interwebs to reach as many ears as possible. So thank you for listening, and we'll be back next week. This has been a JM Podcasting Services production. Link in the show notes.